In this module, we're going to look at um, analyzing a truss that we actually create inside of Dynamo and um, adding loads to it and then actually being able to visually watch it deflect and display different um, strain on each component. And we step through this in the lab, component by component, building up a truss system that we can then apply loads to and fixing points and then apply stresses to and watch the deflection. Here we have a little bit of deflection showing in this. And then eventually um, we can express that strain um, graphically. And we'll do a final output where we'll look at a few beams and um, understand their performance under different load and um, um, uh, how can I say it, moaning configurations or supporting configurations. But all of that's based on uh, this idea that we can animate this truss and we can look at this kind of um, mesh, the stresses that happen or the strains that happen within inside of a mesh system. And that's based on some um, software that's inside of Dynamo as an add-in, which is called DynaShape. And um, let me refresh this because I've lost the link to the video. And I'll just start this playing because this is really, this is the very powerful tool that allows us to even be able to do this lab. So here we have a, a grid mesh system um, now being supported probably by gravity, but in a dynamic way where each node is affecting each other. So we get that kind of a waving undulation. You can see where it's pinned down at certain points at anchor points and then disrupting that structure and having that structure physically respond to that. So it's a really beautiful piece of software. It adds a second layer or another layer of animation to what are static BIM drawings. Here it looks like a um, exposed to a wind system and um, being able to manipulate it in real time. But this is all um, just to demonstrate how powerful this tool is. We're going to use it in a very simplistic way to look um, at a truss. But it is just the beginning of the utilization of this powerful tool and what it could mean to you in future um, analytical situations. So I'll just jump out of this now. And so we're going to have to load that up into DynaShape, into Dynamo in order to get that functionality. And all of this is based on um, where I got the idea for this project. And I'll go back to the first slide in this. Um, this was part of an Autodesk University presentation. Um, um, I thought uh, Dieter Vermeulen um, is a really bright um, structural engineer who's now working, I believe, for Autodesk. And he put together a great presentation here. And I want to step through it because a lot of what the idea behind starting with the, um, the analysis of a truss is for us as architects is to figure out how to make complex systems and then how to optimize them both for their aesthetics and their structural performance. So I want to get us, um, um, it is the prelude to us getting into generative design. And this presentation had a lot of nice aspects describing that. I got a kick out of this disclaimer. It talks about how Autodesk uh, provides products and ideas, but they may not actually pan out in the long run, which means you may start using some software and it might just um, disappear. So how to describe optimi optimization? Um, the, um, the idea is, to, is obviously to find the best solution by maximizing and uh, minimizing certain criteria that you want to measure. Um, the, uh, the idea of a huge design space of ideas or possibilities uh, coming to an optimal single solution. If you're really into this, there's all kinds of definitions about um, this Pareto fr frontier about how we look at optimized solutions when they get graphed out. Um, and there's a couple of ways that we think of the methodology of searching. And I just wanted to touch on them. One is a brute force search where we're almost trying every, every um, um, alternative to find out which one is the best. A brute force meaning it's sometimes time consuming, but it is simple to set up. And um, it can work for relatively simple problems. When things get more complicated, um, we, um, we look towards these ideas of genetic algorithms and they kind of grow into this idea of an evolutionary theory where we take ideas and we evolve them from the best outcomes, the survival of the fittest, so to speak, modify them and reevaluate them. And we're not saying what happened if we evolved and it, didn't, it wasn't successful, it might get thrown out, um, not surviving, so to speak. 
Um, this is some discussion of workflows in the specific project. Obviously, we're going to use Dynamo. Um, project uh, Fractal and Refinery are both, um, sometimes they're bandied about, but this gets back to whether these are going to be carried forward with Autodesk. Um, I think that generative design is a, a term that's taking over, and these two tools may start to merge or become other things. So I wouldn't get too caught up in names. And we kind of avoid this uh, robot structural analysis. This is really in-depth structural analysis um, with inside of Autodesk. But we've already, if you've done the generative design one or not, we've already worked in some way or another in generative design with inside of Dynamo with the idea of, um, of what Project Fractal is. The idea of you set up a mathematical model and you run to certain criteria and evaluate outputs for them. And I think this is Fractal. And this is Refinery. Refinery is actually the one that's more similar to where we are right now with um, what is available inside of Dynamo. And so we, here we have, in this case of this project, we are constructing a trust system and then trying to optimize it for, I think it's the amount of coverage of an area. And actually, if you looked in here, um, it doesn't have what the optimum outputs they want. I can't see that. Um, but um, a platform area is one of the performance criteria that it wants. So it wants to make this as large as possible with the least amount of materials. And so that's a relatively complicated uh, kind of set of analysis. Um, so he talks about a bunch of different projects, but the idea of the software that gets used for them, I don't want to spend too much time with that. I really wanted to just show you this image because we're gonna, you can see how it's very similar to what I've just described in our project. We have um, um, fix, fixing points. In my case, I made these gray. I think I made the loads red in our project. He's not showing the loads here. And then we're using um, sliders to make adjustments to our geometry. Um, and in this case, we uh, use DynaShape um, as the um, functional program. Um, but we're really not going towards um, a truss optimization. We're really just looking at um, evaluating them at this point. But in this case, if we were to, if you were actually just to want to do this project, you could go through and um, especially with what you've learned in this module, um, look at this more complicated space from tr space um, space truss. And um, as you can see here, they're showing you the deflections in the um, using the um, DynaShape uh, plugin, and then going through and optimizing it. Um, or whatever parameters you'd want. So he talks about the construction of it, um, which is really all that critical. He does a live demo of it. And here's another um, idea of optimizing a simple truss. And this is, um, uh, I thought it was too limited for, you know, just to give you an idea of what was going through my, my thinking. The idea of the variation of the shape was only to um, influence the bottom chord of this design. So I thought it would be much more interesting to give us a lot more variables in the design of our truss system, especially with loading points, kind of as if we were to be able to move off to our own kind of beam analysis system. Um, but um, just for your own um, knowledge, I guess, um, Autodesk has um, these external tools that function very much like Revit. So actually, as you can see here, let me back up. Oops, lost it. There we go. We've got um, same as I'm describing that idea of showing you by the thickness of this element how much uh, stress is in that uh, specific unit. Um, in our case, we're able to color those because we can tell whether it's a push or pull function, and then um, kind of actually add a little bit more uh, visual interest in it. So this is a step-by-step, -step, and we're going to do that in our project, so I won't go through that too much. He does a live demo of that. And he's kind of comparing this idea of brute force searches to other kinds of search techniques. So there's a lot going on um, in this, and I'm going to just quickly move through. Here now we have a genetic algorithm. So he's actually showing this idea of proposing specific kinds of shapes then selecting the ones that um, do right, evaluating them for fitness, and then um, 
putting them back in and then reconfiguring them or um, changing some parameter on them and then putting them back in um, kind of like as an evolutionary process. And so this is actually chock full of great stuff. This could be, if we were to want to do this in our um, class, this could easily go over two weeks. Anyway, so that's the setup for thinking about how, where, why we're working on that trust and where uh, ultimately you as an architect would want to go in that kind of analytical situation. You could imagine um, a large hall where you wanted to have a, um, a trust exposed trust system, but you wanted it to look both beautiful and um, uh, high performing at the same time.